In this example, we have a frame that has a roller support at A, a fixed support at C. Members, we're told, have constant EI, and we're supposed to estimate the lateral displacement delta. And in this stage, we're going to make a guess of even the estimate. And initially, you might say, hey, the problem statement's not very clear. They say estimate a lateral displacement delta, but they don't say where, and shouldn't it really do that? Well, let's dig into this a little bit more and see what's going on in the system before we decree that this problem statement is somehow deeply and impossibly flawed. For instance, we already commented on, hey, we have a roller out here at A, a and so we're going to have to have some sort of vertical reaction so that there's zero displacement in the vertical direction at A. We know we have a fixed end at C. That can't move up and down. It can't move left and right. And it cannot have any rotation. So three possible displacements, all of which have the displacements have to be zero. So there has to be some sort of force effect that keeps that from being non-zero. And so there's a couple of things that are easy to figure out. For instance, with this applied load of 10 kips acting to the left and with no other reaction acting or possible in the horizontal direction, that of course means sum of forces in the x that cx is also going to be equal to 10 kips. With no vertical forces happening here, it means that ay and cy would have to tend to be equal and opposite of what's shown. Don't know what the magnitudes are yet. And with this 10 kip load wanting to try to not only slide the structure to the left, it also wants to try to create a counterclockwise rotation of the structure about point C. That's what would make it sense to have a resisting moment down at the base of MCB that equals, or not equals, but is uh, resisting that effect to try to rotate the structure in a counterclockwise fashion, and then that means MCB would be clockwise. So there's a couple of things we can kind of figure out right off the bat. But an even more basic one here is that, well now, hey, wait a minute. We got one, two, three, four reaction components. We used one of the equations of equilibrium to justify CX, and we also looked at another one to, to uh, look at the relationship between AY and CY. But ultimately here, from a big picture standpoint, we've got four reaction components. We don't have any special conditions, so we only have three conditions of equilibrium, and that means that 4 being greater than 3 by 1, this is indeterminate to the first degree, statically. <coughs> so that means it's a little bit more complex than what might happen if uh, we didn't have, for instance, this roller support. <coughs> okay, so let's make a couple of assumptions before we go a whole lot further. One of them is going to be that we have elastic and that we have linear behavior. So no plastic hinges or yielding or of any sort are going to form, no buckling or anything like that. And it's already been stated, but not only do the frame members have constant EI, but that we're going to assume that EI of the beam is going to equal EI of the column. Don't know if that matters or not, but we're going to make that assumption right off the bat. And gee, I'm not quite sure what else to to assume, but we can always come back as we develop our guess and, and add assumptions as necessary. So let's think about here what the model for our guess might be. <clears throat> it is indeterminate, does make it more complex. We're asked to find the lateral displacement delta. We just figured out that since we got the fixed end at C, that's not going to go anywhere at all, period. AY can't go up and down, so that means that the only lateral displacement at a joint that makes any sort of possible sense is what happens with this beam AB, that it's going to move left and right. It's going to bend, too, and there might be some rotation at B. But, oh, hey, there's one of our other assumptions, rigid joints, in this case, rigid joint is going to be at B, which is at 90 degrees, and it should remain 90 degrees after the deformation. So, huh, well, this is kind of interesting. If I was going to guess what happens to this deflected shape, 
I'd say that because of what happens with AY, there's going to be some sort of smiley, say, smiley face curvature in that member, and that this uh, column wants to sort of bend to the left as well. So, hmm, how's that all going to work out? And what what's, what should I be doing here for in our guess? Remember, this is just a crude guess. We're not trying to get it nailed down right. So I'll come back and I'll say, what if, and it's a kind of a very crude F, what if the all of the deflection came from just only the column. Right? So it would bend over like this. I'm not sure if that's what's really going to happen, but if it did that, and then I had a 90 degree joint up at the top, I've had a rotation, I've had a translation, I know that the beam has to then somehow bend backwards and get back to zero translation. So there's your delta B which is going to be the same as your delta A. I know that I actually have a problem here in the model. right? So to have something like this happen, well, what we're going to also assume is that it's okay for no equilibrium at B. E. Now that really feels bad, but note here we've got a joint that's curved like this, and the way I've just drawn here these moments then both of those would be going in the same direction and that that's got to be really bad assumption it can't be very good but if we do this what's going to allow what's going to enable us to do is it's going to say that our model for the gas is in effect captured mostly by the cantilever action of the column only and just by what we've done here we know that's going to be wrong but it's not going to be completely wrong. It's going to have some element of reality to it. Sort of. It's certainly going to be okay down here at the base. What it's going to do higher up, well, that's where things will begin to change. And so we'll have this point load that comes in at six foot off the ground. And in this kind of model, then we would end up that being just straight, no curvature at all. That could be our estimate of the delta. That seems to be what we're after. We're pretending what we're really saying here is okay for the no equilibrium at joint at B is that the beam AB offers no stiffness is what we're really saying that all of the stiffness comes from the, the column. Now if this is the case then our gas could come in a variety of different ways. You'd actually find a cantilever beam with a point load somewhere, in this case at the mid-span, probably in a beam table. This is not a hard one to go figure out and just go work out. And let's just work it out right up here. Over here, the moment diagram that we would have then would look like so. And so our moment, this would be drawn on the compression side. We've got six foot high, that would be minus 60 kip foot. That would be our moment diagram. We would divide by EI to get the curvature. Sorry, there we go. And now when we come back and we want to estimate what our delta is, that's just going to be the tangential deviation of B with respect to C because of the tangent being right on the undisplaced position. That little piece is the going to be identical then to that tangential deviation. So our guess then becomes with the second moment area theorem, TBC equals the first moment of that area. That area will be that triangular area. So one half, I'm going to disregard the sign, it's all going to the left right now. 60 kip foot over EI is the base of that triangle. The height of it is 6 feet. Then we need the moment arm. Right, so that's going to be down here, so that's going to be at 4 foot, 2 foot, and then we have 6 foot up to the top. That moment arm that we want is from the top down, so that will be 10 feet. 
And let's see if I can do this one in my head. That'd be 6 times, uh, well, that'd be 60 times 60 squared, so that's 3,600 over 2, so that would be 1,800 kip foot cubed over EI, and that then would be my guess for delta B, that it equals 1,800 kip foot cubed over EI going to the left. I think that it won't be terrific because I haven't included the flexural stiffness of AB. I know I've messed up in the equilibrium of that joint at B, that that can't be the way it works. If this was really going along for the free ride, it would have the beam would have come down here, there would have been your 90 degree, I've got to bend it to get back up and that's going to induce curvatures in the column and that will probably actually make the frame sway back to the right. So I think this is going to be an upper bound answer. I don't know, I could be wrong, we'll see what happens in later steps.